OK, so let's say we are going to have to draw a bar chart and we're going to work with some very basic data here. Uh, we're going to have favourite chocolate bar, Mars, Snickers or Bounty. I've collected the data and we've got three for Mars, seven for Snickers and one for Bounty because no one likes Bounties. OK, so um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to run through how we would draw the bar chart. Okay, and that's why I've set it up with this projector. Okay, just so we can see a nice graph. So, what I would start off with is drawing some axes. So, I'm going to start off by making sure that I've got some axes drawn in. I know I've got some drawn on the board already, but let's say I need to do that, draw them on. Okay, I'm going to put some arrows on the ends. Okay, now I've got the vertical axis. The vertical axis is always going to be my frequency, unless I'm looking at bars going horizontally, of course. Okay, but I, don't, I shouldn't have said always, but in the majority of cases, frequency is going up the left hand side. Okay, and I am going to be going from zero. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven's my highest, so I'm just going to go up to seven. Now, along the bottom, the bottom is going to be represented by the favourite chocolate bars. Okay? So, it is necessary to make sure that you are labelling the axes, okay, they should have names. The left hand axis, the frequency, starts at zero and goes up in numerical fashion, okay, so it doesn't like skip out two, for example. So zero, one, two, three, four, and so on. Now, the actual bars themselves, the bars must be of the same width each time. And there must be gaps between the bars. Because we are working with discrete data, we are working in discrete, distinct groups. And so the bars must also be distinct and separate. So we're going to start with Mars. So that goes up to three. Now, I'm going to leave a gap between the vertical axis and my first bar. Okay? Now... This isn't always particularly necessary, but it does separate it out and makes it look a little bit neater. Okay, so here is my Mars column. Then I'm going to have stickers. I'm going to leave a gap. So I'm now going up to seven. Notice how I'm using a ruler. Make sure you do that. Don't do this freehand. Otherwise, you will lose marks. Okay, so that's stickers. And then we've got bounty. Now, bounty is only one. So we've got... Bounty, like that. So, make sure that you have labels on your axes, that you have gaps between your bars, and the gaps are also of the same size, regimented size, and that the bars are of the same width. Okay? And that is how we draw a bar chart. Okay? And a bar chart is working with discrete data rather than continuous. When we go on to draw a bar diagram or a bar graph or more commonly referred to as a histogram that's when we're going to be dealing with this uh, with continuous data but for bar charts like this we are working with discrete data